Hi, Calvin here with Highway Crafting. Today we'll be making a four-bladed balsa wood boomerang. Hugh Hunt provides some specifications. Here are the four pieces of material needed to make the boomerang. Two pieces of wood to make the four blades. A small piece of hardwood for pressing through the center of the blades to hold them together when it's completed. This could be either a matchstick or a toothpick. And a small elastic to also help hold the blades together. This boomerang is basically a helicopter rotor without the helicopter hanging beneath. As with the helicopter rotor, the blade needs to be an airfoil shape to provide lift, except in the case of a boomerang, the blade flies at a steep angle to provide sidewards movement, which causes it to come around in a circle and come back to you. There's a little bit more going on, and Hugh Hunt talks about that in his article. We'll do the minimum work required to make a neat working boomerang. Then after it is complete, we'll add some modifications to change and improve its performance. The first step in making the boomerang is to draw the basic shape of an airfoil on the end of the blades so you can visualize the wood that you'll be removing. Typically, the thickest area of an airfoil is about one-third the distance between the leading edge and the trailing edge. So that's what this line represents. It's one-third the distance from the leading edge to the trailing edge. On the end of the blade here, this blue inked area represents the wood that will be removed. The remaining wood will form the airfoil shape of the blade. But we only want to remove wood up to the point where the other blade crosses this blade. These two lines are the alignment of this blade on top of the bottom blade. And here is the center through which we will eventually press the toothpick to join these two pieces of wood together to form the boomerang. Here is one of the blades and I will start with sanding off the trailing edge to form the trailing edge. A piece of 100 grit sandpaper wrapped around a flat piece of wood works great for removing, removing the wood final smoothing sanding will be just done with a handheld piece of 220 grit sandpaper. So when you do when you sand down the trailing edge, you want to have your piece of wood hanging about 1 millimeter over the edge of your your workbench and you just do long strokes that cover the whole length of the trailing edge. Don't work up and down in one location because you end up making grooves. So long strokes And you want to leave the trailing edge a little thinner than this, about a half a millimeter, so I can remove more from there yet. And then I want to go up to this line, but not remove this line at this point.
Okay, that is done for the trailing edge. It's about a half a millimeter thick. You don't want it paper thin, otherwise it will be weak and break too easily. And you can see I went up to the line in some spots, but not too far. Okay, I finished sanding the trailing edge and you can see the basic shape of an airfoil developing. Now we just have to remove some wood from the leading edge to round it and that's even much easier because it's much less wood to remove. Again, hang your piece of wood, your, your blade about a millimeter over the edge of the workbench and use long smooth strokes keeping an eye on the on the profile that you need to remove And you don't want to end up sanding the front edge to make it dimpled. But I think that is finished. That's a nice shape. I will do some final smoothing with just a fine 220 grit sandpaper. And a little bit more yet. And then I will shape the other three blades yet. This end and the two ends on the top blade. So here I have all four blades completed. While smoothing with the 220 grit sandpaper I intentionally sanded off some of the lines just so it would look neater. The shaping and smoothing took between 10 and 15 minutes of focused effort. The next step is to prepare for assembly. You need to make a hole through the center of each blade so that the toothpick can help hold the blades in alignment with each other. I already made a hole in the top blade. As you twist and push the toothpick through the blade, rotate the blade and toothpick back and forth 90 degrees just to ensure that you are pushing the toothpick through at a 90 degree angle. Alright, that's through. Now we are ready for assembly. Okay, the toothpick is through and we can break off the excess toothpick just like that. Now it is ready for flying. But I should first point out that this boomerang is designed for a right-handed thrower. Because a right-handed thrower will throw it like this and the lift is like this to the left so the boomerang will curve around back towards the right-handed thrower. A left-handed thrower would have to hold the boomerang like this to throw it, which is awkward. Ideally they would be able to throw it like this, but you can see with this particular boomerang they would be throwing it backwards the trailing edge would be leading. If you want to make a boomerang for a left-handed thrower, you would need to reverse the leading and trailing the lines on your pieces of wood before you start shaping them. 
Okay, let's take this for a test flight. We have sufficient space in this room. Let's test the boomerang. This is the simplest boomerang. In the next video, we'll work on modifications to improve and change the performance.